Hello friends, warm welcome to all of you to my channel. Good day friends, hope you are doing fine. Welcome to the session of mainframe tricky DB2 interview question. So moving to the first one. What is the difference between union and union all? Union and union all in DB2 are used to retrieve data from two or more tables. Union returns distinct records from both the table, while union all returns all the records from both the tables. If you know that tables already contain distinct records, then use union all. It will take lesser execution time, so performance of the query or code will improve. Okay, moving to the second question. What is null indicator and how it is used in COBOL? The answer is DB2 uses a special value indicator, the null value, to stand for an unknown or missing value. If you do not specify otherwise, DB2 allows any column to contain null values. Using the not null clause enables you to disallow null values in the column. Primary keys must be defined as not null. Nulls do not satisfy any condition in an SQL statement other than the special is null predicate. If you ask DB2 whether a null value is larger than a given known value, the answer is unknown. If you then ask DB2 whether a null value is smaller than the same known value, the answer is still unknown. When working with COBOL programs and DB2 databases, it is important to validate that fields in the database do not contain null values. To validate null values using COBOL and DB2, you can follow these steps. At first, declare a null int variable for each nullable field in the database. The null int variable should be declared as S9 of 4 comp. 01 customer name pick x of 30. 01 customer name null int S9 of 4 comp. In your COBOL program, retrieve the data from the database and check the value of the null int variable for each field. If the value of the null indicated variable is minus 1, the field contains a null value. If the value is 0, the field contains a valid value. Here is an example given. We will make use of null indicator in order to store a null value in any column of a DB2 table. Firstly, we should move a value minus 1 in the null indicator in our COBOL DB2 program. After that, we execute update or insert query to store the null value. For example, if we have to update a null value in the order underscore description column of the order table where order ID is 3345612, then we have to write a paragraph as shown below. Please go through it and understand clearly. Order description n variable is the null indicator here. The important point to note here is that the second line in the paragraph, that is the line highlighted with orange is optional. Once we have moved minus 1 in the null indicator, then no matter what, 
value we give in the data field only null value will be stored in db2 table so when we are sure about the fact that our COBOL program will definitely store a valid value in any column of the table we must define that particular column as not null but in that case if we try to pass a null value we shall encounter a minus 305 error that is a very important question it is often asked in the interviews so i have given a long explanation for the null indicator okay moving to the next slide question number three what does between and in operators do is between inclusive of specified range values the answer is between will validate a range of values whereas in would check a specific list of values between is always inclusive of the range values specified so for example if you use between for the range 40 to 80 40 and 80 will also be included in the check moving to the next question how to find the number of rows in a db2 table to find the number of rows the user has to use select count within brackets star on the db2 query what is the use of distinct operator distinct eliminates duplicate values while retrieving records from a table moving to the next question what are aggregate functions aggregate functions are built in mathematical tools that are used in the db2 select clause examples are max sum average that is avg etc moving to the next slide what is a cursor and why it is used the answer is a cursor is a programming technique that helps the select statement finding out a set of rows but displaying only one at a time this is because the host language can deal with only one row at a time this is the reason in COBOL DB2 programs we mostly use cursors question number eight does the open cursor statement fetches data the answer is no it only places the cursor on the first row of the table moving to the next slide can there be more than one cursor open for any program the answer is yes moving to question number 10 what is the physical storage length of each of the data types date time and timestamp the answer is the physical storage length of date is 4 bytes time is 3 bytes and timestamp is 10 bytes moving to the next slide which field in sql ca shows the number of updated rows after update statement the answer is sql errd check the value of sql errd to know how many rows got updated after an update statement moving to the next question can host variables in a cobol db2 program be renamed or redefined the answer is no okay moving to the next question what is dcl gen and what does it contain the dcl gen utility helps us 
to generate the table structures and host variables automatically. Using this utility, we just need to provide the DB2 table name and it will return the table structure and the host variables in a PDS member. We can simply use this PDS member in our COBOL DB2 program in the working storage section using the include statement as shown below. Please go through the syntax. The order D is a PDS member which is generated using a DCLGN utility here. This will have the structure of the orders table and host variables for all the columns. For example, the columns order underscore ID and order underscore date with data type as character of 30 and timestamp will have a host variable as order ID pick X of 30 and order date pick X of 26 respectively. Moving to the next slide. What is the difference between include and copy while using DCLGen? The answer is the main difference between include and copy statement is the PDS member with include statement is expanded during pre compilation while the PDS member with copy statement is expanded during compilation. Moving to question number 15, what are the differences between alias, synonym and view? It's a tricky question and is often asked in many of the interviews. So I am giving a bit of long explanation for this. Okay, the answer is a synonym is used to reference a table or view by another name. The other name can then be written in the application code pointing to test tables in the development stage and to production entities when the code is migrated. The synonym is linked to the auth ID that is the authorization ID that created it. An example is given here. Please go through this. In this way, we can create public synonyms. Okay. The second one is views. Views are virtual tables. That is, they are collection of columns from related tables that are defined in a way such that they make it easier for a user to access needed information from a database. An example to create a view is given here. Please go through the syntax. A subquery has also been used here. Please note it. Okay, moving to the third one that is alias. An alias is an alternative to a synonym designed for a distributed environment to avoid having to use the location qualifier of a table or view. The alias is not dropped when the table is dropped. Aliases are often used to make column names more readable. An alias only exists for the duration of that query. Aliases can be useful when there are more than one table involved in a query. Functions are used in the query. Column names are big or not very readable. Two or more columns are combined together. Example of an alias is given here. Please go through the syntax. Here O and C are alias names. Please remember an alias for a table or a view can be defined at a local server to refer to a table 
or a view that is at the current server or a remote server. An alias name for a table or view can be used wherever the table name or view name can be used to refer to the table or view in an SQL statement. Next question. What is the difference between group by and order by? This is also an important one often asked during interviews. The answer is a group by statement sorts data by grouping it based on columns you specify in the query and is used with aggregate functions. An order by allows you to organize result sets alphabetically or numerically and in ascending or descending order. I have given an example of group by, so please go through the syntax. This query will fetch total revenue for total number of guests along with 12 extra guests for each different movie present in the table. Next, I have given an example of order by. This query will fetch all the movie names for the particular time specified in a descending order. So, movie names starting with Z will be at the top of the resultant output and those starting with A will be at the bottom of the list. Please remember default is order by ascending. Moving to the question number 17. How will you find 2910th highest salary from employee salary table? So the query I have written here, please go through the syntax. Here we have used order by and limit operators. So, when we write limit 2910,1, then it will skip 2909 records and only return the 2910th record. So, in this way, we can find any salary. Moving to the next slide. What does the exists operator do? The answer is the exists operator is used to test for the existence of any record in a subquery. So I have given an example here. A subquery has been used. So please go through it carefully. The above SQL statement returns true and lists the suppliers with a product price less than 20. Okay, moving to question number 19. Why do you use having clause? The answer is where clause cannot be used with aggregate functions. Okay, moving to the next slide. What is self join? The answer is a self join is a regular join, but the table is joined with itself. I have given an example here. Please note that aliases have been used here. The above SQL statement matches customers that are from the same city. Moving to question number 21. How many wildcards are there in SQL? The answer is there are 5 wildcards in SQL. Percentage represents 0 or more characters. So, BL percentage finds 
bl black blue and blob underscore represents a single character so h underscore t finds hot hat and heat square brackets represent any single character within the brackets so h then oa mentioned within square brackets then t finds hot and hat but not heat circumflex represents any character not in the brackets so h within square brackets circumflex o a then t after the bracket finds heat but not hot and hat hyphen represents any single character within the specified range so c a hyphen b within square brackets then t after the bracket finds cat and cbt these are basically used with the like operator okay so moving to the next question how will you fetch only 60 percent of the records from a table the answer is using a top percent operator i have given an example here so please go through the syntax moving to question number 23 how will you fetch only first 3000 rows from a table called customers the answer is you have to write a query like select star from customers fetch first 2000 rows only this kind of queries are often used with cursors moving to the next slide what do the sql any and all operators do the answer is the any and all operators allow you to perform a comparison between a single column value and a range of other values so i have given an example of any here you can see a subquery has been used here so this sql statement lists the product name if it finds any records in the order details table has quantity equal to 10 this will return true because the quantity column has some values of 10 next i have given an example of all here also you can see a subquery has been used so please go through the syntax so this sql statement lists the product name if all the records in the order details table has quantity equal to 10 this will of course return false because the quantity column may have different values not only the value of 10 okay moving to the question number 25 what are correlated subqueries correlated subqueries are used for row by row processing each subquery is executed once for every row of the outer query the parent statement can be a select update or delete statement so i have given an example here here also you can see the use of a subquery the query will find all the employees who earn more than the average salary in their department so moving to the question number 26 how will you find all departments that do not have any employees from the departments table so i have written a query here please go through it this will find all departments 
that will not have any employees from the department's table. So moving to the question number 27. What is the difference between nested query and correlated subquery? This is a very important question often asked during interviews. So the answer is in nested query, inner query runs first and only once. Outer query is executed with results from the inner query. In correlated query, outer query executes first and for every outer query row, inner query is executed. Moving to the next slide. This is also a very important question actually. So please listen carefully. What is the difference between left outer join, right outer join and full outer join? Okay. The answer is left outer join returns all records from the left table and the matched records from the right table. I am showing an example here. The left join keyword returns all records from the left table that is customers even if there are no matching records in the right table that is orders all right now coming to right outer join the right join returns all records from the right table and the matched records from the left table as usual i am showing an example here here the right join keyword returns all records from the right table that is employees even if there are no matches in the left table that is orders it returns all records when there is a match in either left or right table so I am giving example here please go through it the full outer join keyword returns all matching records from both tables whether the other table matches or not so if there are rows in customers that do not have matches in orders or if there are rows in orders that do not have matches in customers those rows will be listed as well okay moving to the question number 29 this is on isolation levels why do we need isolation levels when an application process accesses data the isolation level determines the degree to which that data is locked or isolated from other concurrent processes. The isolation level is in effect during an unit of work. Suppose any column value in a row inside a table is changed by transaction 1 but the changes are not committed. Next, transaction 2 reads the uncommitted data. If the changes are rolled back, the view of data in the records of transaction 2 may be wrong. Okay, moving to the next slide. What is dirty read? Suppose, any column value in a row inside a table is changed by transaction 1 but the changes are not committed. Next, transaction 2 reads the uncommitted data. If the changes are rolled back, the view of data in the records of transaction 2 may be wrong. This phenomenon is called dirty reads. Okay, moving to question number 31. What is non-repeatable read? The answer is, when a transaction rereads a single record and finds that it has been changed or deleted, it is called 
non repeatable read suppose transaction 1 selects information about the book effective java right in the meantime transaction 2 changes the price of the book then transaction 1 reads the effective java details again and it sees that the price is now different okay moving to question number 32 what is phantom read the answer is when a transaction performs the same query twice and sees new unseen beforehand results it is called a phantom read transaction 1 looks for books with prices between 50 and 90 and finds out there are two books satisfying this condition in the meantime transaction 2 adds a new book with a price of 60 when transaction 1 queries the data again it finds out that there are now three books so this kind of phenomenon is called a phantom read okay now moving to the next slide what is the difference between non repeatable read and phantom read the answer is in non repeatable read already existing row data is changed but in phantom read a new row is inserted into the table okay so moving to question number 34 what are the different levels of isolation possible so this is a very important question so i am giving a bit of long explanation for it please listen carefully there are four levels of isolation number one uncommitted read transactions can see data that are not yet committed in this kind of isolation level this is the least restrictive level of isolation it does not protect against any of the phenomenon we talked about till now okay the next level of isolation is cursor stability in this kind of isolation level it is guaranteed that any data read by a transaction has been committed it prevents the reader from seeing any read that is uncommitted still it does not exclude the appearance of phantoms or non repeatable reads the next level of isolation is repeatable read here it guarantees all the above and it additionally guarantees that once the data are read they won't change if the transaction reads the same data again it will find the previously read data unchanged under repeatable read an application can retrieve and operate on the rows as many times as necessary until the unit of work completes however no other application can update delete or insert a row that would affect the result set until the unit of work completes the next level of isolation is read stability it guarantees that all its predecessors do and subsequent reads cannot see any new data this is the most restrictive isolation level of all it also allows for the least concurrency in this level no read phenomena are possible okay so moving to the next slide the question is what is dbrm the answer is dbrm refers to database request module okay it has the sql statements 
extracted from the host language program by the SQL precompiler. The COBOL DB2 program is pre-processed by DB2 to produce a DBRM that will be used to bind against a particular DB2 subsystem. Okay, moving to question number 36. What is a package? The answer is a package contains control structures that DB2 uses when it runs SQL statements. It contains executable forms of SQL statements. Packages are stored in the database system catalog tables. The DBRM is first bound to a package. There is one package for every DBRM. One to one relationship, you can say. The package is then bound to a plan. Whenever there are any changes in the source code, we only need to bind the package again using newly generated DBRM. There is no need to bind the changed package again to a plan. Here I have given some examples how to bind DBRM into a package and to bind package into a plan. You can see the utility programs such as IKJEFT01 used here. Going to the next slide, what is a plan? Plan is a DB2 object. It is produced during the bind process that associates one or more DBRMs with a plan name. Moving to question number 38. What is the difference between plan and package? Plan contains the access path. That's why it can be executed directly. But package cannot be executed directly as it does not contain the access path to data. So packages must be bound to a plan before it can be executed. Okay. Moving to the next slide, what is a collection? The collection is a group of packages using which we can segregate the DB2 packages belonging to the different applications. Moving to question number 40, what is consistency token? The program and its associated SQL package contain a consistency token that is checked when a call is made to the SQL package. The consistency token must match, otherwise the package cannot be used. It is possible for the program and SQL package to appear to be uncoordinated. Actually, at pre-compile time, the DB2 pre-compiler places a consistency token in both the host application code for compilation and the DBRM that will be bound. At execution time, if these tokens do not match, DB2 gives an SQL code minus 805. The consistency token is in both the load module and the DB2 catalog and must match. So, moving to the next slide. What are SQL error codes? Minus 803, minus 805, minus 811, minus 911, minus 922, and 100. These are some important SQL error, code, error codes which we often encounter. Okay, starting with minus 803. It says an inserted or updated value is invalid because the index in index space constrains columns of the table. So no two rows can contain duplicate values in those columns. Minus 805. Package name not found in plan. Okay. Minus 811. The result of an embedded select statement or a subselect in the set clause 
of an update statement is a table of more than one row or the result of a subquery of a basic predicate is more than one value okay minus 911 the current unit of work has been rolled back due to deadlock or timeout okay moving to minus 922 authorization failure next is 100 if sql code is 100 no data was found for example a fetch statement returned no data because the cursor was positioned after the last row of the result table okay so moving to question number 42 what is primary key the primary key constraint uniquely identifies each record in a table primary keys must contain unique values and cannot contain null values a table can have only one primary key and in the table this primary key can consist of single or multiple columns that is fields moving to question number 43 what is foreign key a foreign key is a field or collection of fields in one table that refers to the primary key in another table the table with the foreign key is called the child table and the table with the primary key is called the referenced or parent table all right now we are moving to the question number 44 if a non db2 program calls a db2 program the calling program's name will be there in csin of ikjeft01 and the plan name will be that of the called program but is a bind needed or a plan has to be created for the non db2 program also the answer is no plan needs to be created for the non db2 program here i am giving the syntax of the sys t in please go through this syntax okay moving to the next slide what is the maximum number of columns possible in a db2 table the answer is 750 now moving to question number 46 what is check pending it is a state of the table being locked due to constraint violation for example if you try to nullify the master table alone and reloading it with some additional records without deleting the detailed table records or vice versa the master and the child tables will go to the check pending state okay now moving to the next slide what does dml stand for and what are some examples of it the answer is dml stands for data manipulation language the commands in dml are select insert delete and update okay moving to the question number 48 how is the substring that is sub str keyword used in sql so i have written the query here please go through the syntax carefully here 4 is the starting position and returns two characters after that okay moving to question number 49 how do you leave the cursor open after issuing a commit the answer is cursor with hold option moving to q50 and congrats for the half century there are many duplicate records in a db2 table what is the query to retrieve only duplicate records 
so I have written the query here please go through it carefully this should be the syntax to fetch only duplicate records okay moving to the next slide what is run stats when will you choose to apply run stats the answer is run stats is run when there is heavy insert or update activity that changes the characteristics of the data to a great extent okay so the operation will be smoother when you apply run stats all right moving to the next slide what are the various locking levels available the answer is table space table page and row now moving to question number 53 what is static sql and what is dynamic sql static sql is sql statements in an application that do not change at runtime and therefore can be hard coded into the application dynamic sql is sql statements that are constructed at runtime for example the application may allow users to enter their own queries thus the sql statements cannot be hard coded into the application okay so moving to question number 54 how is the sql case operator used the case expression goes through conditions and returns a value when the first condition is met like an if then else statement so once a condition is true it will stop reading and return the result if no conditions are true it returns the value in the else clause if there is no else part and no conditions are true it returns null I have given an example here of the case operator please go through it carefully please like and share the video if you love this update and subscribe my channel if you have not done already also do not forget to let me know your feedback in the comment box thanks a lot for watching and till we meet again bye bye from your host Tapajoti.